These stories at the heart, I think they're timeless, you know, you can place them in any period. I forget that I'm in a period film. Everyone's mannerisms are very modern. Everyone's just cool, like cool people that you'd hang out with now. It was like a football game, like a boxing match. It's a major, major sport. And the funny thing about it is the funny parallels it's running to sporting life today. They are rock and rollers. We're in front of huge groups of people cheering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My first impression was I was laughing and I was crying and I had to do it. I was like, I have to play this character. I know him and I love him. Someday, I'll be a knight. A thatcher's son? You might as well try to change the stars. <laughs> Can it be done, Father? Can a man change the stars? Yes, William. He believes enough a man can do anything. William feels that in order for him to change his stars, that he has to follow his heart. And so he finds his opportunity. We could do this. We can be champions. William has to pretend to be a knight and to be a nobleman. You have to be of noble birth to compete. And to that end, he invents a fake identity. So we lie. In one month, we could be on our way to glory and riches none of us ever dreamed of. But you can't even joust. I think he's getting worse. He is getting worse. I've waited my whole life for this moment. We are the Burgess Merediths, sort of, co collectively. They're killing your rock. We'll get it in the cradle. Get it in the cradle! Our rehearsals were basically going out to dinner with each other, having a few drinks, getting to know each other, which is extremely important because that friendship translated to the friendship that he'd created in the movie. Easy, boys. They're likely to think it's the first time I've broken a lance. Heath has a very masculine quality that I think really helps him sell the character in the movie. He can bring stillness to a scene. And to have the kind of confidence in your ability to do that is unusual for someone of his tender years. Of course. He's amazing, you know, he's 21 and he's it's, it's a joy to be around. He's got his head on his shoulders. Sort of uh, sense he has about himself, it's wonderful. I was from Perth, Western Australia. I was acting from the age of 10 or 12, amateur theater. I ended up in Hollywood and I did change my stars, I guess. Jeff, tis my lady. Oh, jeez, you William, you aim too high. Oh, if there's another way to aim, I don't know it. Concentrate. What should I say to her? Your name, lady. I still need to hear it. <sighs> Sir Hunter, you persist. Well, perhaps angels have no names. Only beautiful faces. And you are? Ulrich. Von Lichtenstein from Gelderland. Of course, when they're jousting for the favours of some of the ladies, that's, that adds a different spin to the whole process. Did she see me take the hit? Yes, she saw you take the hit. Or was she concerned? It was dreadful. Her eyes welled up. It was awful. Do you think you will come? If I could ask God one thing, it would be to stop the moon and make this night and your beauty last forever. It's William's first time being in love, and she obviously has never met anybody before. And if you're in love with somebody, you're going to do what it takes, no matter what. Your name makes no matter to me. Brian had told me about Shannon and said, you know, I found this girl. She hasn't done anything, but she's really, really good. Right up. Shannon was working as a DJ at the birthday party for Gwyneth Paltrow's brother. And uh, casting director Francine Maisler talked to her and really liked her and asked her to come in and read for this movie. Would you speak to me? Speak. But, sir, my sex are marked by their silence. She knocked everybody out. She was just instinctually right on. Oh, but I would hear you if it cost me my ears. Yeah, that's well. <laughs> For I do not want silence in my life. Tell me your name. Would you care if I were ugly? Well, yes. I mean, no. You could really see on film that there was good chemistry between the two of them. Brian called me up and he said, you know, it's my pleasure to let you know that you're going to be going to Prague this summer for <laughs> three months. And I just went, get out. I didn't believe him. And I feel like, you know, it hasn't sunk in yet. <laughs> I love the fact that Brian stuck on that, you know? He really wanted her because he saw the potential. He saw what she has inside of her and has been bringing that out of her ever since. Sir Ulrich von Lichtenstein. I would have him win my heart. 
You have to go to the banquet tonight. You have to dance. You have to make an appearance. I don't know how to dance. So, Ulrich, why don't you show us all a dance of your country? I'm asked to present a dance from my country land. Show us a dance of Gelderland. So I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, you should bow. And Lady Jocelyn, my princess, jumps in and claps her hands and, and kind of picks up where I left, and everyone starts to copy my, my dance. It starts off as a stiff dance, with the partner and the bow and everything very proper. And halfway through, the beat switches over, and David Bowie kicks in, and Golden Years picks up. And then everybody slowly starts boogieing a little more. So just mix it in as if you were DJing, and it, and it actually works, because you just start hearing the first few beats of the David Bowie song. Don't let me hear you say lights taking you nowhere. It's so much fun for me, too, because I always was a dancer. Nights are warm and the days are young. Brian would say, Shannon, you came to L.A. to dance. Now you're dancing. There's my feet, I lost my soul. Oops, I'm begging you see for a little soul. She makes me feel like a poet. Well, you may feel like a poet, but you sound like an idiot. My dearest Jocelyn, uh, I miss you. <sighs> Is, was that wrong? Well, it, 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 it's up to you, really. Um, uh, it's your funeral. I mean, letter. Brian's written a, a, a writer. A what? A, a what? A writer? So he sees everything, as Brian does. And you gentlemen are? Well, I am Sir Ulrich uh, von Lichtenstein from Gelderland, and these here are my faithful squires. I'm Richard the Lionheart. Pleased to meet you. I wrote the part for Paul. We had been friends, and when I sent him the script, he called me and he said, you bastard. And I said, what? And he said, I'm naked all the time. And I said, yeah, well, don't you think you can do it? Hey, sir. There's a thing called a closed set where if people are naked, nobody comes on. What a closed set actually means is that people turn up in droves to come and see it. They turn up in droves. 250 Czechoslovakian extras staring at your old fella. Jeffrey Charles is the name. Writing's the game. It was fun to have a writer in there watching everybody, and hopefully you get the feeling he might write them all down in a story somewhere. I like it. He's Chaucer, but he's also partly Brian's alter ego. There's a brilliant line in it, which is, William accuses me of lying, and I say, I'm a writer, I give the truth, scope! I think that's really revealing. Act as my herald, and you'll receive a share of the winnings. Done.